Now to continue on, uh, we talked about the NAACP being formed to, uh, to try to stop lynching, but also trying to expand the right of black Americans to give them the constitutional right to vote. Now they had specifically in the Constitution the 15th Amendment. It had been passed, but still many, many black people did not vote. In fact, not even not vote, they weren't even registered to vote. We'll talk a little bit more about this. Like I mentioned, in 1870, shortly following just a few years after the Civil War, the 15th Amendment, this is not a law, this is actually a constitutional amendment. This guaranteed that people, including ex-slaves, had the constitutional right to be able to vote. This gave, uh, specifically, it gave black men the right to vote. It didn't extend the right to women yet, but at least gave black men the constitutional right to vote. Now, this concerned white Southerners who were worried that black citizens would vote for, understandably, a black politician. Now, why in the world would a black citizen vote for a black politician? It's because they believed that they would have their best interests in mind, and they would try to pass laws that would best serve them and their community. That only makes sense. That's why a Republican who's registered as a Republican would vote for a Republican candidate. That's why a Democrat who's registered as a Democrat would vote for a Democrat candidate is because they believe they will represent what is important to them. There's no surprise about this. Um, like I mentioned before, concerned white Southerners who were worried that they that black people would vote for black politicians. And because of this, in response to this, states passed several laws to get around the 15th Amendment. Now, these laws were absolutely unconstitutional, but until they were challenged in court, they stood uh, as legal in these states. They included things as a poll tax, the grandfather clause, and literacy test. Now, we talked about this before, but just as a quick review, the poll tax, if you wanted to, to, um, to vote, you would have to pay a tax. To go when you went to vote, you'd have to pay a tax. Now, some whites, matter of fact, many whites didn't have to pay this tax. It was a tax only on black citizens that wanted to vote. And if you're a poor person, a very poor person, you have to make that decision, is it worth me paying to vote? Poll tax. Uh, grandfather clause stated specifically that if your grandfather did not vote, you could never have the right to vote. And it was, it was a ridiculous, absolutely insanely ridiculous way to get around the 15th Amendment, but it worked. And then, of course, there, was, there were literacy tests. Now, there was different tests. Uh, some whites did not even have to take a test, but if they had to take a test, there was a, many times a separate test for a white person and a much, much, much more difficult one for a black person. So these were three ways that, uh, that the states tried to get around the 15th Amendment and not allow black people to vote because there was a fear, again, that there would be black politicians. And a black politician would do their job by creating laws to serve the people that voted for them. And this absolutely feared or frightened many of the white Southerners. Again, we talked about that, that tension between modern and conservative or progressive and conservative in the 1920s. These definitely would have been progressive ideas.